Recording in progress. Our agenda, we shall have an opening prayer in case you wish to lead us in an opening prayer. Please keep your hand up or you can raise up your hand and then we shall, you will be taking us through the word of prayer. Then we shall have a simple introduction. Then uh, five minutes past 10, uh, we shall have the principal education officer from the Ministry of Education and Sports talk to us. Then after we shall go through a presentation. After that, we shall go and have question and answer. In case you have any question that has been puzzling you on matters concerning DIT, we shall go on and answer those questions. I understand you filled in uh, the survey form and we got some of the questions and we shall be answering those questions in our presentations. And for any questions that will not be answered, feel free after the presentation to raise up your hand and then ask. And lastly, uh, we shall have a conclusion and then that's where we shall end our meeting. So let me ask any volunteer, anyone who wants to lead us in a word of prayer, raise up your hand and then you take us through. In case you want to lead us in a prayer. Okay, Mr. Rogers. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Yes, uh, yes uh, colleagues, uh, let, us let us have a uh, prayer. prayer. Uh, there is uh, an there echo. Is an echo. <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this session. We want to thank you that we are here to come and understand and learn about uh, uh, how to handle learners when it comes to DIT, World of Work Assessment. We pray that you open up, uh, pray for our presenters to be able to present to us, all the colleagues to be able to take in the message and be able to embrace the changes that are here. Thank you and we pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rogers, for taking us through the word of prayer. Once again, uh, good morning, dear teachers, head teachers, directors of schools. And I know we may have some few students who are on the call uh, who may want also to learn more on matters concerning BIT. Uh, we are really very grateful to have you and thank you so much for joining the call. My name is Stephen Kaziba, and I'm the one who's going to be uh, leading on this meeting. I want to welcome you once again, and I want to let you know that by the end of this session, there is a lot that you are going to learn from our facilitator. Uh, all your questions you have been having on DIT, how to handle DIT, uh, how to do different things with when it comes to DIT, you are going to have answers to them. And I'm very sure by the end of this session, you'll have understood why we have DIT as part of the new lower secondary curriculum. For those who have not yet uh, started on the process, I'm very sure by the end of the session, you will be helped and at least you'll get there. In our midst, we have some guests and we have some people who have joined us. Allow me to welcome the principal education officer uh, who is on the call. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to welcome the special guests from BIT. Thank you so much for joining us and all the teachers that are joining us from the different parts of the country. We are really very happy to have you. Like we saw on our agenda, uh, we are going to be on time for every activity. And now it is exactly five minutes past 10. Allow me now to invite uh, the principal education officer, government secondary department at the Ministry of Education and Sports in charge of posting and transfers of teachers. Uh, he is also uh, responsible for supporting schools on the education management information system program, what you call EMIS. Allow me to welcome Mr. Ronald Dungu, 
to have an opening remark as we begin our session. You are most welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kaziva. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, yes, Mr. Ronald. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here, but also I'm very happy to see that this session has been organized so that we can share, learn together, and continue supporting each other going forward. As mentioned, my name is Ronald Dungu. For many of you, you are familiar with me, but for those who are new to this engagement, we as a Ministry of Education are very happy that the schools have taken off well with a new curriculum in whatever um, challenges you meet, we know that you will succeed if you work together as schools. Definitely as a ministry, we know that not all schools are at the same level. You don't have the same facilities, but we know that in your district, you can plan and work together to support each other. I know that the experts are going to take us through what is required of us um, by DIT, but the two are moving together with the work for the National Curriculum Development Center, and together we compose the new curriculum. So in that new curriculum, we want the learners to leave school when they have a skill, when they can be able to put food on the table, when they can be able to bring business in the homestead. And of course, what is uh, very important is for me as a mathematics teacher, how does that topic I'm teaching in the classroom, how does it bring food on the table? And I think that is the greatest challenge um, that we are facing, but together we need to find the solutions to these uh, problems. So like I've said, Mr. Kaziva, are you hearing me? I can see somebody's hand is popping up. Yes, Mr. Onadu, we are hearing. The person is having challenge with audio. Okay, then they log off and return um, while they've selected um, the audio part of it. So like I've said that uh, not all schools have the facilities we need for DIT to come and assess. But the question is, if you have some, many schools don't want to hear that, but um, to us, that is a possible uh, option. So we need to work together in collaboration and share these training facilities. And we can share on some costs as schools to make sure that that training center is good for our sub, is good for schools will have um, tailoring department, but probably we can work together as schools to strengthen that tailoring department such that even my students can come in to your school and they get trained so that they can be assessed by DIT. Is also most important here is that the teachers in our schools need to take advantage of the new curriculum. The teachers need to get skilled and me as an individual, I think our teachers must get out of the forward classroom and work within the training fields. I spent some time at Gaza High School, for those who know me before, and I championed um, the agricultural training program for learners and for teachers. And what I remember vividly, when we took up 
banana growing because I can be certified as a banana farmer. But when we took up banana growing, that the teachers set up their own banana garden and learn from the very basics up to the market. And I know if during that time, DIT was already working with us in schools, the teachers could have been certified as well as the learners in banana growing. And probably the teachers would have set up acres of uh, bananas and make um, some bit of um, some bit of money. Let me just share. Um, Mr. Kaziba, are you seeing um, my screen? Yes, Mr. Ronald. Okay. Now, this is a report on the Gayaza Toke project. We started a project in Gayaza, and that was the Gatoke project. And that was in 2015. And this had both the side of the learners and the side of the teachers. And just looking at this poster here, this is a presentation of one of the art students uh, presenting the banana uh, project. For us, we used to call it Gatoke project. Now, these are skills taught by the fine art teacher. Now, if the fine art teacher does not know anything about banana growing and does not allow students exercise within the banana garden, then when it comes to uh, teaching them about branding, they will not be able to produce a poster like this. But if the teacher knows well about banana growing and also participates in the project, then you will be able to see signposts coming out of his classroom talking about bananas. And what am I talking about now? I'm talking about the beauty DIT is going to bring to enhance um, the practicability of our subjects. And um, I have another picture here. This is now the fruit. And um, I hope you can see the young ladies harvesting um, their fruit here. Now, as a mathematics teacher at A level, teaching linear interpolation and extrapolation, we're able to use the banana garden to demystify the concept of linear interpolation. When a farmer grows um, matoke in their garden, the first harvest, they can take two bunches to the market and ask the market vendors to give it a price. So you weigh the banana, 20 kilograms and 28 kilograms, you go to the market and they give you a price. For the 20 kilograms, we shall give you 15,000. For the 28 kilograms, we are going to give you um, maybe 35,000. Now you come back as a farmer with your two values. And whenever you harvest any um, product, you weigh it and you put it and calculate the price. That is, and if it is for um, the two values, to know the cost that now you find the mathematics teacher on the blocks and the students are wondering what am I going to do with this but that concept is used by farmers 
to be able to, so that when you come to the farm gate, farmers have been cheated throughout because what is on the market and they don't treat them, comes and buys from the farm gate and goes and makes a lot of money farmer. My um, worker usually tells me there is a banana, um, we, we have a seed, but uh, they gave us 600, 6,000. What is for that part? Now I think I have a bunch of, have been lost. Uh, Mr. Nadion Network. Can you hear me now from the phone? Yes, you are clear now. Okay. Um, the picture then will be having a challenge, but at least you will hear me now from the phone. So what I'm talking about, let me mute. Okay, so what I'm talking about is while we are talking about DIT um, coming in to, to try and assess our learners and give us certificates, do certification for our learners, we the teachers must get involved such that we relate the DIT training. Um, of course, they've laid out uh, the training say for the banana farmer in, in the assessment training package, but we participate, we need to participate fully as teachers so that we see where do we come in with our subjects. I will just uh, complete this simple story here. Um, so we harvest, and at some point, of course, there the weighing is there, and those who teach mathematics and physics, um, weighing are very important skills. Um, when you look at this garden here, this was a mathematical garden and every student in my class at A level had their coordinates uh, registered and it was in form of their banana stool. And they were happy learning mathematics as they produced. And if DIT had come at that point, I was going to um, present all these learners for certification. Um, to DIT and we would have gotten the certificates as a class. So my other uh, request here is, and this also goes to the way we internalize the NCDC, uh, the new curriculum, that we can have a class project. We are talking about uh, students innovating and coming up with the class projects. Now that is at the classroom level, but we can marry the two things. We get the DIT scaling part of it, and we also get the project part of it uh, from our classrooms. And for me, such a school will be able to take the learners through different stages. Of course, here yeah, they were learning how to prepare a meal. That may not be um, DIT, but I, I want to show you that at some point, um, we were talking about baking um, out of the garden to value addition. Now, um, when you look at this, this is a banana cake, okay? So somebody could have moved, uh, a school can move uh, from growing a certain type of banana to making a banana cake. Now you are moving up um, the value chain. And of course, this is foods and nutrition for you. Um, there is also a lot of art going on here. The ICT club is marketing the product of the school. 
So there is a lot of integration of subjects that can come in as we take on a particular line of training. So I want to encourage all our friends here that let us not think about the new curriculum as that something that has come to um, make work difficult for us in schools. Some people are very angry with the new curriculum, but also as teachers, let's look at the opportunities in it. So as a teacher teaching in this school, engaging learners um, in this training, I will eventually become that myself. I will leave school, I will invest the little money I get from the salary, and I will now begin uh, a serious business out of the curriculum that I'm teaching. And that is the very reason why we want to sit together online because we may not be able to meet everyone um, because the country is wide, but we can come together, share ideas, and eventually learn something we can do. With that, Mr. Kaziba, I don't want to make um, the introductory remarks so wide, but I thought that I needed to share my personal experience here so that together as teachers, we make good out of this new curriculum, out of the DIT uh, trainings they are talking about, so that we become empowered ourselves and live better lives as individuals. I want to thank you and wish everyone um, good deliberations. I'll be here to listen in and to carry the messages that I must carry to the Ministry of Education. I thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ronald Dungu, uh, for the good opening remarks. And let me hope everyone has learned a lesson. At least if you have not picked something, just know that with DIT and with what we have, we must teach practically and we must be able to earn from what we are teaching. Allow me now to dive into our presentation. And in case you have any questions, kindly reserve them at the end. Everything will be answered at the end. Our workshop is on teachers' support on matters concerning DIT, and my name is Kazwa Steven. By the end of this session, uh, we shall expect everyone to know what is DIT, why should learners do DIT, which occupations are available for DIT, how do we teach DIT, do we know the assessment training packages, have you received them at your school? How are you utilizing them? How does DIT assess its learners? We shall have a look at some sample assessment items like past papers, and we see how we can prepare our learners for assessment due November. We shall look at the certification and the grading scale when it comes to DIT. We shall also look at how are we going to be registering our learners online and also manually for those who may have challenges, though at the moment they are phasing out the manual registration. We shall look at the <coughs> registration fee <coughs> per candidate. The then uh, we shall look at many of us want to be assessors, want to be examiners for DIT. What are the requirements and what do we need to have in order for us to be able to be assessors. And then at the end, we shall look at what we call a question and answer. In case you have any question concerning DIT, then we shall be able to answer it. The first thing is what is DIT? Now DIT stands for Directorate of Industrial Training. And it is the skills quality assurance. It is its responsibility is to skill. We are looking, they are looking at skilling the Ugandan child. 
and it is an assurance body under the business technical vocational education and training that is what you call bitvet then it works as a connecting link between the theoretical education and the real working environment so it is trying to bridge that gap that is existing because we are mainly looking at the theory and for it, it is looking at the world of work what is taking place where our children are heading which is the world of work uh, what it does dit develops what you call assessment and training packages in simple terms these are like the syllabus in when you put it in terms of the uneb assessment and training packages those are the syllabuses that are being used for any given occupation so under the assessment and training packages that's where we find things that a competent person in any occupation must know in case you are a baker what do you need to know in the baking at what level in case you are into uh, uh, web designing what do you need to know in case you are into banana farming, what do you need to know? So all those things are being catered for uh, under in, when we talk about the assessment and training packages. We shall look at them and then uh, we see how to deal with them. Uh, then it links the labor and the market needs. Then we are going to have some reflection questions as we start. By the end of this session, at least you must be able. So the first question is that as a teacher, what skill do you have? Many of us here have skills, but we have not yet identified which skills do you have? Do you know that you can utilize that skill you have to earn a living? Do you know that you can utilize that skill to change the community where you are living? How is that skill helping you to earn a living on what you are earning in a school? How are you utilizing that skill you have to earn a living? Then, how are we utilizing the skills to teach practically? How are we applying the skills we have when we are delivering our lessons? Then the last one, how will you feel? Or how do you feel when a child exits the learning cycle with a skill? In other words, what we are saying that in anything we are going to be looking at, we want us to reflect and ask ourselves that what will happen or how will I be feeling? How will a parent be feeling when a child leaves the school, when he or she is competent in a given occupation, when he or she has a job, when he or she can do something to earn a living? So that's what DIT is looking at, that as the child is leaving school, as a learner is leaving school, as your child is leaving school, does he have something he can do to earn a living? That if things don't work out, God forbid, and maybe he doesn't reach senior four, will he be able to earn from what he has already, oh, from what he has learned already? That in case a child drops out at senior two, will he be able to earn from the knowledge he has acquired from school? Will he be able to utilize the skill he has learned in school to earn a living? Uh, let's look at some things. Imagine the, your child comes out from school as a parent. When he or she knows how to bake, how will you feel? Will this child look for a job or he can start from here? Uh, allow me to first disable something. Then, uh, so I'm just trying to show you some of the occupation, some of the things that our children can learn. Our children can learn the baking, can learn how to make cakes. That is an occupation. With such a child, do you think you'll be looking for a job? Not really. When we go to agriculture, imagine your school or at school, you are carrying out uh, maize farming, cereal farmer. Will you, be, uh, will you be buying posho at school or you can add value? on the maize planted and then uh, reduce on the school budget. So we can go on and look at the other foot where we have uh, tomato farming. If a school has engaged in tomato farm and we have students who are doing farming in tomatoes, do you think that school will be buying tomatoes? Do you think a, such a child 
will be the same like a child who has not gained any school from school. You know that now you can utilize this knowledge to integrate it into what you are teaching. Let's look still at poultry in case a school has engaged in layer bird farming, in poultry farming. Do you think this school will buy eggs? Do you, don't you think that this school, its diet is going to change? Don't you think school uh, children will be able to eat eggs? Don't you think that they can add value and, pro, uh, and provide a link between these eggs and add value onto the eggs and maybe they utilize them in doing other things? Don't you think that by the end of the, uh, of the two years, three years or four years in school, don't you think that this child will be very different with a skill that he or she can utilize to earn a living? Do you think that this child would still be asking for perfect money from a parent? Not really. Uh, we have other skills in physical education. When your child, your child can be good at swimming, it can be in football, it can be in basketball. All these are skills, these are occupations. It can be in dairy farming. It can be in rabbit, it can be in ICT. When your child is an ICT practitioner, when he or she knows how to develop a website, when he or she knows how to uh, develop other things. It can be in music, when your child can play the organ, can play the keyboard. All these are occupations that DIT is bringing on board that we want our children to do such that by the time they go out of the school, he or she can earn a living. He or she, when he can put something on the table to sustain himself at school. It can be in carpentry, when he or she can learn how to make a table. It can be in construction, when he knows how to do the building and the rest. It can be in coffee farming, it can be in bean farming. Imagine a school that is engaging in beans. You think they'll be buying beans at school? Not really. That means that even the school budget will have to reduce. It can be in banana farming, like how Mr. Renard has told us. It can be, that is banana. So that means that just, and this one is not so expensive. Just imagine every child has one banana stem is taken care of. That means at the end of the day, he or she will be able to sell his banana and get some pocket money he can utilize. It can be in tailoring. So we have a lot. We have very many occupations. It can be in making liquid soap using some of those ingredients. It can be in fish farming. We have schools that have wetlands where you can construct a pond. It can be in tree planting. And this is now where we are heading. And our question is, why should learners do DIT? So one of the reasons why uh, we are encouraging schools to do DIT, one, is that we want to curb the unemployment rate. We want to nurture talents at an early age. If at all you have been benchmarking from outside country, they start nurturing the talent at an early age. Students go into the academy at an early age. And that's how they become very competent. We want also to prepare students for a successful change from education to full-time employment. We want to prepare them for the world of work. We want to have hands-on experience in the work field. And also we want them to make the teaching and learning interesting. We want now to have the teachers integrate what they are teaching into what is taking place in the real world, such that we can be able to produce a citizen. We can be able to produce a child that has the skills that are needed in the world of work. What are the benefits when a child does DIT? One, it prepares a student to handle life in the working world. We have said that if at all this student happens to drop out of school in senior two or senior three, he or she will have somewhere he can start from to earn a living. If this student starts his project, or maybe banana farming, maybe poultry in senior one, and he's, he goes on saving, 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 that means that by the time he or she will reach senior three, he will have the skills that he or she needs to survive in this vocal world. 
Two, there are some skills that this student is going to acquire, and these ones can be obtained as he or she is, uh, is doing the activity uh, practically. And also the student will have a guarantee of a job after they finish. Just know that at the end of senior three, once this student has been assessed and is competent, that means you have a job and the only thing we need is just to start. If someone has been doing baking from senior one to senior three, by the time he, he reaches senior three, it means that this student is competent, he can bake the cakes and he can sell them. So that is where we want to head that when these children leave school, let them have something they can do to earn them a living instead of going to streets to ask for jobs, to look for this and the other. And when, what is the theme for the lower secondary curriculum? Our theme is to produce a secondary school graduate with employable skills that are competitive in the job market. And what are those employable skills? It can be tailor, it can be weaver, beautician, hairdresser. We have very many of these skills as you look at the screen. All these are skills that people in the real world are looking for. They're looking for people who can construct, they're looking for carpenters, they're looking for bakers, people who can cook, uh, people who can use the ICT gadgets and the rest of that. So that is where we want to head that. Let these students have these skills at an early age. And as they grow, these skills will help them to earn a living and will produce a child. But we are not only going to concentrate on the students earning from the, their skills, but we want also the teachers to earn from what they are teaching. So in DIT, we have what you call occupations, uh, or what you call the occupation profile. And this one describes the duties and tasks. Someone who is competent in a given field is expected to perform. In case you're a baker, there are some things that we shall expect you to do as someone who bakes, that you know how to make queen cakes, you know how to make marble cakes, you know how to do this and the other. In case you are someone uh, who is competent in ICT, we shall expect you that you know how to use all the office, uh, office packages, you know how to do this and the other. So that's what we call now the occupations, which duties and tasks are tasks are expected from someone who is competent in that given field. And it is from this that we know that everyone, at least most of the teachers, we have some of these skills, but we have not yet discovered them. Yet, if at all we discover them now, it means that we shall be able to train these learners and we shall also be able to perfect our skills. And at the end of the day, we shall be in position to earn from what we are teaching. Now, which occupations are offered by DIT? DIT has about 120 occupations that are available. In fact, there are now more than 120. When you go to the website, we shall see all the occupations. There are about 120 occupations for students at all level or for students. And then these occupations are clustered under what we call the pre-vocational subjects. When we talk about pre-vocational subjects, uh, we have some subjects that uh, lie under that category and allow me to share this. And when you look at my screen, uh, the first vocational subject is agriculture. And these are some of the occupations that we have under agriculture. But as a school, you may not be in position to do all these occupations in agriculture, depending on the resources we have. So what are we to do. You look at the occupations that are available in that given cluster and choose the ones you can manage. Much as you can do all, but time may not allow, resources may not allow, but look at the resources. Look in your area. Which one do you think will work well? In case maybe I'm in Imbarala, I know very well that people in Imbarala, these students can be interested in cattle farming. These students can be interested in banana farming. So that means that when I have my school or when I'm in school, those are the ones that I can choose under agriculture. In case maybe I'm in Lugazi, I know tea is around. I know I can deal in this and the other. In case I'm in Imbali, I know coffee goes in well. So we can have our students 
take on a coffee farmer, we can have our, because here even they have the experience, they have been doing it at home. So here you are just uh, adding on more on what they know and at the end they can be very competent. So that is under agriculture. So in agriculture, we have about 21 occupations. Then in art and design, we have people who can do the weaving, we have the knitters. So these are the occupations. But as a school, you select the ones you can manage, the ones you can be in position to handle. We cannot, we may not be in position to handle all, but you look at the occupations you have and then ask yourself, which one will favor me? Which one can I take on? Depending on the nature of the students that we have. Then we have performing arts, the dancers, the singer, and the rest. So those are the different occupations, technology and design. You can look at them. Those are the ones we have. Then we have nutrition and food technology. Those are the occupations we have. Then we have physical education. Uh, then we have information. And then lastly, we have the entrepreneur. So these are about 120 occupations. And these are what we are, ex uh, uh, we are expected to choose from as we are training our learners for the world of work. So as a school or as a teacher, look at all these occupations, select the ones you think your learners can be able to handle. If you don't have a swimming, uh, let me say, you are in an area where the school may not be in position to afford a swimming, uh, a swimming pool or where you don't have a swimming pool, then we shall not advise you to go in for swimming because these learners may not have uh, the time to go on and practice. If you are in a school whereby maybe you don't have a, a field for rugby, then let's not go in for that rugby, but let's choose the ones that we see we can handle. And where learners really are diving into, those ones that you think the learners are very much interested in. So those are some of the occupations. When you come to nutrition and technology, also look at them and ask, which one do you think can work for our school? Which one do you think can work for our learners? Here learners have the choice to select the occupation they want, but as a school, as a teacher, you must sit down and then uh, look at what they have chosen and ask yourself, shall we be able to handle or we shall need very many other resources to handle? So for that one, we need to be uh, very careful on it. But how are we going to teach these occupations? So when we are handling the occupations, we have what we call the assessment training packages, or like what I call the assessments that contains what you call the modules. Here, when I talk about modules, I'm like talking about what you call a topics to teach. Take an example, uh, let me look at maybe uh, let me look at baking. Now, this is the assessment training package for people who are going to do baking. And it lists out the requirements. It lists out the modules that someone at level one is going to be doing. So people who have finished P7, they go in for level one. I will talk about the levels later on. So as a baker, you look at what you have in the syllabus. Now, this is our syllabus. So I will open the syllabus. I come on the first page, uh, on the page, and I ask myself, what topics or what you call modules? What modules am I covering? And how am I going to cover them? So uh, these are the modules. So under baking, we have five modules, one, two, three, four, five of them. And you must cover them uh, using one, one, two, zero, hours, but you ask yourself, where will I get these hours? But remember, we have three years to prepare learners for this assessment. So learners must be able to make cakes and cookies. Learners must be able to prepare and bake pastry products, yeast, desert, and so on. So these are the things as a teacher that you must be able to cover with these learners as they progress from senior one to senior three. So these are the modules. Then you go on in those modules, they are broken down again into what you call like subtopics. Let me use that language of subtopics. So when you look at making cookies, it is further divided into what you call subtopics. And in each of those subtopics, there are some things, there are particular things 
that learners must be able to do. So when you look at the competence, it tells you that in, by the end, the learner must be able to make cakes, must be able to make cookies and biscuits. And what, uh, what learning working areas are needed. So these are the things as a teacher that you must look at, that these learners must be able to prepare cakes. But also when you go to cakes, which type of cakes do they need to know? So that so you as you are teaching, you can say, I must teach them how to make queen cakes, teach them how to make marble cakes, sponge cakes, banana cakes. Like you had Mr. Luna telling us that after growing your banana, add value. So we can use the banana as we have grown in case we have a group that is dealing in banana to come up with the banana cakes. You can you have to teach them lock buns, jam buns, and this. So you go on dissecting, you go on subdividing those different things. You look at cookies. What do they need to know? That these are the things they need to know when it comes to cookies. So you, this syllabus is divided further into the different parts. So those are the things you need to know. In case you finish that module, you go to the second module. You ask yourself, what am I going to teach? That in this module, what am I interested in is to make this product. Product. So for you, what you look out for is what you call the learning working assignment, things that these learners must know. And in each of those ones, each of those uh, practical exercises, these are the things, practical exercises, those are the things they must do. In these ones, they must do, and they must be able to know it, how to do it. So in case it comes, they must be able to make uh, cheese straws, cheese biscuits, and so on. So practical exercise, those are the things they must know or they must do. And they must be able to do them competently without the help of the teacher. So those are the different things. So each of those modules, you go on preparing learners. Remember it is for three years. So you must be going preparing them to be able to do that. So how are we accessing these training packages? So uh, when you look at my screen, uh, you go to the DIT website. So this is the DIT website. Once you click on the DIT website, I'm going to drop this link in the chat uh, for those who can, uh, those who can, uh, I have dropped that link, uh, sorry. Let me drop it there. Uh, you can drop it there. So when you go to this website, you come and look for where we have ATP booklets. You click there. This is how we are going to be accessing the booklets. So once you click there, uh, you are going to be able to access all the training packages that you, you want. Take an example. Uh, someone wants maybe to talk about uh, technology and design, maybe you want to talk about uh, performing arts, I click performing arts and I search for that ATP that I want. So once I click there, I'll be able to get the ATPs. Take an example, I'm interested in having someone who dances. If at all I don't have access to it, I click on it. After clicking on it, you'll come and then download it. So you download it and then you save it on your laptop or on your, on your phone. So that is how we are going to be accessing those manuals. So after uh, downloading it, you save it. So in case your school has not yet uh, gotten uh, the ATPs, uh, kindly let's use the website to access all those ATPs that we have not yet accessed. So the ATPs can be obtained from the uh, DIT website. When you look in the chat, that is the link that you can click on to access the DIT. But like we have said that one of the things that is going to, uh, to limit us is going to be the time. Meaning that as a teacher, as a school, you must plan early, you must plan if at all you are to do all the modules. Now, how am I handling? Uh, I wanted to show, you, uh, to show you how I'm handling or how some schools are handling. There is a school here. I'm going to show you how they are handling it. Now, uh, for them, what they do, uh, this school, this was last year, 
and they were doing their module in basketball. So one of the occupations they chose is basketball practitioner. And this was in term three. So they went on and divided the, uh, the ATP into different parts. Eh? Like they said, in first term, we shall do this. Second term, we do this. Third term, we do this. So I'll come and I say, in this term, what are we going to do? Select the things you are going to do. So now they planned whether by the, that term, these are the things that our learners must be able to do. So one of the module titles was establish a basketball court, and they went on and subdivided them into the things that their learners must be able to do. So these are the things that they uh, uh, that they said uh, they looked in the manual and they got and they were able to teach them. So they went on and looked at the second module. So this time, because third time usually has very, uh, has very many days, so they were able to do even playing the basketball and they taught them the skills. So when you get that ATP, please go on and divide it, divide it into different small portions that you can be able to handle every term, every term, such that by the end of senior three, you have handled all the different occupation uh, or the different modules within that area. Uh, let me hope we are okay on how we are going to be handling it. Uh, however, uh, uh, we are going to, uh, we because, okay, let me uh, first continue and then uh, I'll be able to get there. Okay, then, uh, I'm going to talk about the assessment. So, okay, just give me a minute. Let me share again. Okay. So, how are learners going to be assessed? When we talk about assessment, assessment means the process of gathering evidence to determine whether the learner has met the required standards. So assessment, we are going to ask ourselves, we are going to look at if this learner has been doing baking, has this learner been able to learn the baking? Does he have other skills? Now, if you feel that your learner now is competent, then that's when BI2 will come in and assess and give an exam to that learner to find out whether the learner is now competent. Now, the assessment, we are trying to find out that if uh, maybe Esther has told us that she's good in baking, does she have the skill? Is she competent? Can she be able to make this and the other? In case maybe Elisa has told us that is now competent in ICT, in developing a website, can we, tr can we uh, give him the assessment and find out whether he or she can be able to do it? So now that's what we are doing under assessment. And how is DIT assessing? Now under DIT, here we are going to be very careful. DIT has two papers. We do what you call a theory paper and we do what you call a practical paper. A theory paper, we call it the written test item. And this one focuses on what you call occupational knowledge knowledge within that given occupation in case it is baking. Do you know the theory in baking? Do you know the, the recipes you need when you are making a, a cake? If you are doing baking, do you know the use of, of putting flour? Do you know why you are putting milk there? Do you know the procedures you follow when you are doing this and other? In case you're a poultry farmer, do you know how to do the vaccination? Do you know how to mix the feed? Do you know how to do this and the other? So they look at that occupation and they ask you within that occupation, do you have all the required knowledge that someone who is competent in that field must know? Then how is the paper presented? The paper is presented in three forms. All their questions are in three form. One is what you call short answer items. In the theory paper, or what you call the written test item, it has what you call short answer items, it has the multiple choice test item, and it has what you call the matching test items. So that's what you call the theory 
paper. The second paper is what you call a practical or what you call a performance test item. Under the performance test item here, we look at the other modules the learner. So they actually looks at all the modules that this learner has covered. And from all those modules, they select one thing to do practically. They may say, now that you, are, you have done, uh, let me say you have done uh, things uh, concerning, uh, let me say ICT practition, they may ask you practically to, to do things maybe like uh, installing uh, uh, windows, installing this and the other. In case you have do, been doing uh, things in baking, they may say, make four queen cakes, do it practically, and they come on board and they assess you on and see, are you really competent? Can you be able to do it or you can't? Then always, when it comes to performance test item, we have or they have what called the scoring guide or what called the assessment criteria that they follow. But when it comes to practical or performance test item, there are some things like uh, they fall that you as a teacher, you must prepare your students to have. And one of them is smartness. In case you are someone who is doing farming and maybe you're going now, the practical is on maybe banana poultry. How do you dress when you are heading to the farm? Do you just go in your sandals or you go in your gumboots? So they look at all those things. In case you are doing baking and you are going for the baking class, you are going for cooking. Do you have an apron? Do you have the headgear? In case you're going for tailoring, do you, have the, uh, do you have the apron? So they look at the smartness. How are your fingernails? In case you are doing baking, are the fingernails short? Won't you make people eat that things? So they look at all those different things. And how are they, how are they set? So uh, when let me first talk about the theory paper and I show you a sample how a theory paper looks like. Now, when it comes to a theory paper, uh, the theory paper will look like this. This is a theory paper uh, for level one, and this was done last year, November 2022. Uh, one thing you need to know that DIT does assessments every month, as long as your learners are competent and are ready. If you feel that they are ready even tomorrow, you can invite them and they do assessment. But every month they have a date where they do assessment. So now this was uh, assessment for Taylor. And this is the paper, like I told you, it, have, it has three sections, section A, section B, and section C. And we say that in these sections, we may have a matching test item, multiple choice and short answer items. And all questions are compulsory. So when you are, the candidates are going to for their paper, they write here the registration number. Every candidate will receive a registration number, surname and other, other names. So these are the objectives. However, like we have said that these objectives of the multiple choice item will always be connected within on that field. In case it is soccer, objectives will come from soccer. In case it is the computer, they will come from that given occupation. In case we have banana farm, all the objectives come from that given occupations that you are working on. So those are, that is how the paper will look like, or that's how the, the papers for DIT look like. So those are the objectives, but those objectives focus on, on function understanding of the occupation that your learners are doing. And then, like I've told you, we have what you call the short response items. So short response items is that you just feel uh, you answer. They ask a question, you put your answer. They ask a question, you put your answer. So those are how the, uh, the questions look like and that's how the paper looks like. Then uh, like now in each of the, in the paper, we shall always have that entrepreneurial calculation some of them, okay, it may not be in all, but that entrepreneur, because at the end, we are asking ourselves, how will the learner be able to earn after he or she has learned this skill? After he or she has done this occupation, how will he or she be able to gain from that occupation? 
So you'll find some calculations and these calculations are business calculations that give the idea on what takes place in the world of work. That maybe in case you are into website, into what, how do you make the quotation for someone who has come to design for him a website? In case you are an entrepreneur, how do you, how do you charge someone? So those questions will be related within to that field. Uh, then we said you have what you call the matching and the sequence items. So these matching or sequence items, this is how they look like. At times it might be arranging things in order, asking how on this, in case maybe you're being in farming or in poultry, they may put things in a disorderly way and then they ask you to put them in order. Which one comes first? That in case I'm going to bed, what comes first? Is it mixing flour? Is it mixing this and the other? No. So uh, uh, now that's what you need to do. So that's how the paper and all the papers for the different occupation, that, that's how they will be looked like but do not worry we are going to share some of these items with you such that we can be able to prepare our learners uh, for assessment when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to November however also when you look at the uh, at the uh, at the assessment training packages the last pages in your ATPs have some samples of the assessment uh, numbers like when you look at the very end you'll find those items there so please we can use these ones for now as we wait for other more samples to come to see how we can assess our learners these learners need to be shown how they are going to be assessed such that we can be in position to prepare so at the end of the assessment training packages uh, for every occupation that you are doing there are some sample questions that you can use uh, to test for your learners, that you can use to help your learners know how they're going to be assessed. All the assessment training packages, you'll find these uh, uh, examples there. Then, uh, so sorry, now that is about written test item. Now, when it comes to what you call the performance test item, or what you call the practical, before you sit in for your paper, before the learners sit in for the paper, they are going to send to your school what we call the cutting list. A cutting list is like a confidential for science teachers. It's like a confidential that contains the items that you must buy for your learners or this, what the school must have for your learners. An example you can look at, oh, sorry, you can look at my screen. When you look at my screen, this was the cutting list for a tailor level one in December last year. And the school was told to buy materials like change uh, two meters for each child, a medium stiff paper, a quarter meter, button size, 16, 18, swing thread. Uh, but on these ones, there are other materials that like as a school you must buy. But that means that on that day, these are the main materials that each learner must have on top of other things that a tailor must have in his or her kit. So this, so for all those performance test items, they will be sending to you the confidential or what you call the cutting list. And now this one tells us that now as a school, as we are preparing, we must put into consideration the cost for these materials or for the performance test item. But that one, allow me to have that discussion at a later time. So let me show you, how is the performance test paper? How does it look like? Now for, this was for last year, uh, still I'm using the example of a tailor. So this is how the paper looks like. Now, when it comes to performance test papers, for them, they take long hours. Some may take four, some may take five hours. Some may take the whole day, some may take six hours, depending on how the question looks like. And it's always, for some, it is always one question that the learners must perform or must demonstrate. So last year, uh, this is what they wrote for the learners. They, this was the question that they asked them in Taylor. So, but I want you to relate this to the occupations that your learners are doing. So this, uh, that, this is how the question was. 
and then they told them what to do. And then at the end, they, uh, they showed them which output they must come up with. So last year, this is what the learners did in December when it came to assessment concerning a tailor. In the case it is in baking, they will may tell them that please uh, make four queen cakes, make marble cakes, make sponge cakes, and so on. In the case it is hairdressing, they may tell you make this kind of uh, air dress, make this and the other. So that's how the performance test items will look like but remember this cost for these materials to use in your performance test item are not included on the registration fee you pay no they are not included so as a school you must buy them so that means that when you are making a quotation for what for the learner must have uh or must pay then uh you must put that into consideration Allow me to continue, uh, but in case you have any questions on those matters, uh, please resolve them and then uh, we shall go. But still, uh, maybe I need to show you that also in those training packages manuals, still some samples of the test items are there. So you just go uh, at the end, at the very end, those are some, the last pages, that's where you're going to find some of the performance test items uh they look like this this is now for baker so this is the thing now this is like the question they tell them that make and present six queen cakes and then the assessor will come out uh, uh the assessor will come out and start awarding uh the marks for the different things okay uh i may request in case you joined using two gadgets some of your friends have been locked out because the meeting is to full capacity so in case you joined using two gadgets uh, i may request you to drop off such that you create space for one person to enter okay then how do you register now registration for centers in case your school has not yet gotten a center how do you register for a center now one uh, use schools or what you call the universal secondary education schools do not pay for registration and assessment fees for their candidates. So all the children in government in what called the youth secondary schools or the seed schools are not paying for central registration and assessment. So those candidates or those students, the government has already paid for them. But for them, the only thing that they may go in and pay it may come on the things they use in what in practicals so as a school you must plan the things they must use in practicals that one will be on the school costs as a school so you may uh do something to see how you may come up with the, uh, with what they can use for their practicals but what about for schools that have not yet uh registered what do they do now for any school to be eligible to get a registration center or to get a registration uh what do you need one that school you must have a uneb center number that is one of the requirements that you must be a school with a uneb center number and once you have a center number for uneb then that means uh you can be in position to get uh uh to get the DIT, uh, the DIT, uh, the DIT center at your school. So you may have, you may receive some DIT officials to come on ground and check on what you have on ground. Uh, but in, uh, but it may not be, or you may not receive some, but you can get a center by filling in the form, and then you have your details sent to the number you have attached and the email address but how much do the private schools mainly pay now to pay for a registration or to get a center number you'll have to pay 350,000 for the center number for schools that have not yet uh, uh, got the center numbers and when it comes to assessment per candidate is 80,000 for level one so any school that is going to register any school that is going to be uh, doing assessment in november each candidate must pay eighty thousand 
But like I've said, people in youth schools are not paying, those funders are not paying. But now as a school, this is where I want us to be very careful. Like I've showed you that those test items, the practical test item, there are some materials that they are going to send to you, to you for you to, you must have at school. So meaning you must cater for the cost of those materials. So as you are making a quotation for what the children must pay, please do not forget for the practical test item. Otherwise, in case you don't budget for them very well, it may go on to your cost. But some schools, in case you, the school, the budget is good, uh, you, may, uh, you may cater for them. But now, what, do, what are some schools doing? Now, what some schools are doing that on top of the 80,000, in order for them to cater for the, uh, for the materials to use during the practice, some schools have added on some 20,000. And this 20,000 is the one that is going to cater for these practical test items. So in, at the end, these schools are telling the learners that 80,000 is going to be for your registration. And the 20,000 will be the money we shall use to buy for the materials to use. Like I showed you when it came to, you remember when I showed you this? When you look at these materials, now these are the materials they give. So that means the school must be able to go and buy the change, must be able to buy the stiff paper, big size, and this. So when you approximately, I just say this is around, it might end up with 20,000. Remember, you're going to buy in bulk. So that's why I'm using 20,000. But in case you have very many children, you can add some 10,000. Oh, oh, but this one first sit with the teacher on board and then decide on how much uh, you should add on the top of the 80,000 to be in position to cater for the practical test items or what we call the cutting list. Remember every occupation may have some materials that are needed for the practical. In case this baking, you'll find the material. In case this hairdressing, you'll find the material. In case this in, uh, in technology, you'll find the materials that are needed for those practicals. So please and please plan well when you are telling the candidates how much they are going to pay for DIT assessment when it comes to private schools. But still for the government school, like we have said, that this uh, for items, for platform items, you must cater them, you must cater for them, or you must uh, cater them. So you might, you might also write a simple circular to the parents, because remember the parents must understand why are you charging them the 20,000? So as a school or as a teacher in charge, please write, make a simple circular to those schools and then uh, to the parents or to the, uh, to the administration to tell them how much they need to pay uh, when it comes to the DIT assessment. Let me just check uh, whether you can see there's some circular. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, please, that is it. Okay, so we can continue. In case you have any questions, uh, please, we, I'll be able to respond them at the end. Then we have registrations for candidates. How are we registering candidates? One, we are using the online registration system. That is what uh, uh, DIT wants us to use. The, uh, so let me drop something in the, uh, yes. Uh, so when you check in the chat, I have dropped the link. So once you click on that link, it must be able to take you to the, uh, to the what? To the website. Okay, now let me go to the website. So when you go to, uh, to when you click on that link, it will bring you uh, directly to the website where you can do your online registration. Alternatively, you can go to the website for DIT. Uh, when you go to the website for DIT, in the right-hand corner here, I think you are seeing my cursor, there's what you call register online. So you click on that icon, 
Once you click on that icon, you will get an interface of this nature. So what do you do? Now, this is where I want us to understand very well how we do the registration. So when you click here, now all schools that have not done the, uh, that have not been doing DIT, your username and password are your registration numbers. Take an example, uh, your registration center number UV2F, which stands for Uganda Vocation Qualification Framework, stroke maybe 1655. So this same registration number acts as your password. So your center number is the same as your password for now. So it's the same thing. So I've just copied it from here, or you can type it UV2F slash 1655. So you look out for your for center number, you put it as your username, and you put it as your password. Then you say login. So once you log in, you get a screen of this nature. Now, just because uh, this school I'm dealing with has been doing some registration before, uh, so that's why it is bringing incomplete answer and so on. But what are we going to do now? After opening for the first time, you can come here and say password. Now, when you come to password, you may change your password if you wish, but in case you don't wish, you can leave it the way it is. But for safety, uh, at times it is better you change your password to the one that uh, will be able to work for you. But in case you don't wish, it is okay for you to keep it at that. So my page is still loading. Uh, so also you can load yours. It's taking some time. But let's be, uh -huh. now when you come here, let me open your seeing my screen. In case you want to change, to change your password, you come, you click here, remove this password that you are seeing here. After removing it, put your preferred password. Let me say, put your password that you want. But you first remove, uh, let me say, for me, I can put my password I want. I put, I put what I want. Then after putting, I'll come and I say, change password. That means that now your password has changed. But for username, you cannot be able to change it. But for the password, you can change it in case you wish. Why are we going to register? You'll come here where you have registration. When you come to registration, you are going to come to and say new candidate registration. You click in that icon. When you click in that icon, you are going to select the occupations that you want your children to do. Let me say I'm going to select the first occupation in case I'm having my student as instrumentalist, but let me just check something else. Let me say banana farm. I'll come choose banana farmer. Then come here, which level? Now, anyone in senior three, we are at level one. So I will say level one. Then they are going to ask you training starting date. When did you start training your learners? Now, in case you started in 2020, 2021, you put the date, maybe 10th, uh, maybe it was maybe uh, Feb, which year? Maybe 2021, depending on when you started. And when are they likely to end? Maybe you say, uh, I think by maybe uh, October, they will be competent. So I say maybe 23rd, which month? Uh, that is October and which year? 20, uh, sorry, 2023. So that's when you think they will be competent by that time. So that is the end date. Then which proposed month for assessment? So now our month for assessment the one we are choosing is going to be November, since we are going to be uh, assessed in November, and which year? This year is going to be 2023. Then assessment center location. Where are you located? Then now in case for you are in Webadja, you put Webadja. In case you're in Kampala, you put Kampala. But just you place this, and then they'll be able to show you where you're located. So after doing so, you say save and continue. So that means that now you have, you have entered entries for that. Now, in case 
you want to enter candidates that are doing banana farmer, what are you going to do? You're going to come here, scroll, scroll, scroll like that. So you are going to put in all those details. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come here, where there is click to add a candidate. So I'll come, I say, add a candidate. So now this is my candidate. So I'm going to come and say, what's the name of the candidate? The name is Kaziva. Last name is Stephen. Does he have another name? That may be no. When was he born? Maybe 12th, uh, maybe May, which year? Maybe 20, maybe 2007. I'm just assuming. Eh? Then after doing so, what is his gender? Male. Does he have a name? In case he has a name, then you go and put it there. Does he have a telephone? So anything with a star, that one is mandatory. You must fill it in. Then you come, which nationality is in Uganda? In case you can type here and it, you get your Ugandan very quickly, that it is a Ugandan district, that may, this boy comes from Buyukwe, you put Buyukwe, home, uh, home village, maybe you say Rero, which sub county, in case you know, you say maybe Buyukwe, then you come, which village, maybe Seruti, uh, any form of disability that you know. So those are the first things you fill them. After filling in those things, you are going to come and say, choose a file. Now here you are going to put in your image, but the image, the format of that image must be either JPEG or it can be uh, a PNG. So you say, choose file. Now I have already created my folder with some photos. So this is uh, a sample photo. So you put, place that photo. So once you place that photo, it will come and save itself in that uh, uploaded area. Then you come academic level. Then when it comes to academic level, uh, record of highest academic level, where did he achieve? That this was a primary kid, uh, which award did he get? That he got a PLE. Which year did he sit? That he sat in 2019. Then you say here, PDF, here scan the past slip for PLE, and then you attach it. So I'll come here, choose the file, uh, now, since I have it already, I think the past slip is here. I'll just click in it and it, it will attach itself here. Then you continue. Have you been assessed by DIT before? That no. Uh, which language do you want? Uh, here, you put your language. In case you want to be assessed in Uganda, you put Uganda. In English, Chinyakore, and so on. So you put English. Then who is supposed to learn? Is it government, enterprise, self? Maybe it is so. Then after doing all that one, you say add candidates. Oh, there is something I did not feel. Uh, institution. So institution, this one shows you where did he get that certificate or that result slip from. That maybe he was at he, let me say Marongwe Primary School. Okay. Then I'll come and say add candidates. So now once I place add candidate, the candidate will be added into the system and they will show you that your candidate added successfully. So that means that now when you check on your board, you will see that Kaziba has been already added onto the system. But maybe in case you have made a mistake somewhere, can you edit that? Yes, you can edit. In case you have made a mistake, you come here and edit candidate information in case you have made a mistake and then in case maybe you look at the PLE thing, maybe you have not attached the right thing. Now this is the one I scanned. Then you say, okay, let me make uh, the what? The corrections. Then uh, I'll go back here. And now, now what, uh, after doing all that one, then you can come and it, all the, the fields must be completed. Then I can come here and I say invoice because you have to pay for this content in case you're private school. Uh, for the candidates that have registered so far one person here and how much is this person paying 80,000. In fact, it is, uh, this thing is automatic. The number of candidates you enter will give you the amount you must pay. Then you come here and say generate invoice. So when you say generate invoice, then come and select for which occupation do I want to pay for, that I want to pay for banana farmer. Then I say click to generate invoice. So now that means that your voice, your invoice is going to download itself 
and then after downloading you'll go to the bank and make the necessary payments then on that day when it comes to when they come to do a uh, registration as a school like as we do for UNEP we must have uh, the children's details so we have what we call the candidate album so the assessors will always come to us they may ask you where is your candidate album or in case or the uh, DIT may send it for you. So I will come here and click, but since it's online, you can click and get it such that for you have your things ready. So once I click candidate album, I'll come and I say, uh, we have registered our person as a banana farmer. So I'll come here and I say view. When I place view, I'll get the album. So this album is the one that confirms the candidates you have registered. So. Now, this is the, you must have this when it comes to performance test items or when it comes to practical. And even when you have uh, for the papers, these are the files you must have ready. So you will say print candidates. Then after you do the printing and then you'll be able to, uh, you save it, you download it, and then you have that file ready. So when they come for assessing you, they will be requesting you to have that file ready. So that's how we shall be printing. So this candidate's album is really very needed whenever it comes to doing the DIT, uh, DIT what? Uh, exams or assessments. I'll go back to my dashboard. So after all doing all those things, uh, like we have said, uh, you come uh, submit your registrations, you click there, uh, attach and submit, you'll be submitting. But these entries, uh, for them to get submitted, you must have the what? The invoice submitted. So once you, uh, you attach your invoice, then they'll be able to do what? Uh, to, you attach the photo of your invoice. You take it as a PDF and then you do what? You submit, but at times even, submit registrations then you click here and then you submit after you have paid your money to the bank then after the dit team the ict team will look and then they approve for your registrations and for all candidates that have been approved you'll be in position to see them that these candidates have been approved and then that means that you'll be uh, ready uh, to be assessed so that is briefly how we are going to be doing the online uh, registration uh, for our senior three candidates that are sitting in November. Okay, however, uh, like we have said that at the moment, uh, DIT is phasing out the, on, uh, the manual registration, but for some case, you may, it is being phased out slowly, but you know, change it takes time. So they are phasing it out in process as we are training people to do the online registration. So what do you do? In case uh, the online is still giving it a bit of challenge, then you can use the manual, but I've said it is being phased out. It is being phased out. And still when it comes to uh, the manual registration, much as now we are discouraging it completely, we want everyone to go online since you can be in position to do it wherever you are going to be. But it has not yet been crossed completely, uh, but it is being phased out. So when it comes to the manual one, what you do, uh, you download the form. You download uh, the form. Uh, let me see whether I have it here. Mm, okay, let me get it. So to get the form, that DIT form, you still come to their uh, website. You come to their website here, where the DIT is. Once you come to their website, you are going to uh, click on the, these documents here. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to get that form. I'm going to, okay, just give me a minute and I get it from 
and I get it here. Okay, so hope my screen is back. So you come here where there are documents, come say other documents. So when you paste other documents, you will see a DIT lower secondary registration form. Uh, but this one is mainly for those who want to register their numbers, who want to do it manually. So this is the form you fill uh, in case you want to do center registration manually. But like I'll say, let's first try to go uh, digital. And then in case things do not work out, then that's where we need to go for money. But we want to encourage that every school uses the online because whenever you'll be, you'll be in position to do it. Uh, when it comes to manual, still the form will look the same, but the only, uh, uh, the only uh, difference will be that for it, uh, okay, let me get, I said application, okay, let me get it here. Okay, it is here. This is the manual one. Now, when it comes to the manual one, like you are seeing, the details are almost the same. So you attach the passport photo, attach the name, date of birth, and put all those details that I've shown you the other side. The only section you must not fill in uh, is this section B. Section B, you leave it empty. You don't fill it in. And then section C, you fill everything. So section A and section C are used to be filled in. And this is when you are doing it manually. So after getting this form, in case you have decided to do it manually, what you do, you get all the details for your candidates. On each candidate, attach a passport photo and also go on and attach the photocopy of their passlip. After doing so, you put them in this spring file and said for this occupation, maybe it is the baking, swimming, entrepreneur, put it in this file, and then you submit your forms to the DIT offices in Lugogo there. So that's what you do. So these are the files where they receive those details. So you submit, and then for them, they'll be able to help you. But let's try as much as we can to say that we go to online. However, uh, you must note that for any occupation that you are going to register your learner in, you must have at least five candidates per that occupation. Let me say you want to register people for instrumentalists. To register candidates for instrumentalists, please make sure you have five candidates doing instrumentalist. In case you want to register people doing banana farm, you must have at least five in that occupation, not below five, because they may not, they are not going to send you assessor for that occupation. In case you are doing cooking, please have five. In case you are doing web designing, you must have five and more. I've said at least five, it means five and more per occupation. So the minimum number per occupation is Five. In case you have one person in instrumentalist, please, for this one, they will not send you someone to assess you. Just imagine you are, you are in Tololo and they send you an assessor. So it, will, it is really expensive on their side, so they will not. So make sure that you have at least five people per occupation that you want to sit in. However, just imagine you have four candidates four candidates, maybe who are doing uh, instrumentalists or singers. Now, in, to make the five here, you may get a candidate who is not on your center to come and sit from your center such that you make up the five. Alternatively, you as a teacher, this is your chance also. You can fill this space and you make the 50 person. This one can happen because you have three. And you'll notice that there are some teachers, let me say it is baking. You have only three students. You don't have that too. The first option is to get other candidates from other schools to come and fill up for you such that you make up five. Alternatively, 
you can get to teachers at, at school who may wish to get those skills to fill in the space and register them to do that level. That is the alternative. But if at all you don't have five pundits, you will not be able to sit for that given occupation. So make sure you have at least five pundits per occupation. Now we go to this part where we want to be assessors. Uh, one of the questions that, uh, some of the questions you asked most of you were asking, how can I be an assessor? How can I be a test item setter? How can I be an examiner for DIT? One, an assessor is that person that supports and assesses students' work towards a vocation qualification. And what are the requirements? Now for DIT, their minimum requirements are one, you must have a formal qualification in the technical area or in the occupation where you want to be an assessor. Take an example. In case you want to assess to be, uh, uh, let me say, an ICER, you want to assess to be an ICT practitioner, you want to assess to be a cook. You want to assess to be maybe a, food, a soccer practitioner. For you to be able to, to assess, you must have a formal technical or vocational qualification. What we have from campus or from universities are not vocational or qualifications. The bachelors, the masters are not vocation. So you need that vocational qualification. Secondly, you must have experience in that field. If you have not been cooking, how will you be able to assess? How will you be able to know that this person is competent in that area? Two, you must, now this one, in fact, even you see, I put it in capital. You must be at least one level higher than the level of the candidate whom you want to assess. Uh, now, the senior threes are doing level one. Now at level one, for you to be able to assess people at level one, you need level two certificate as a minimum qualification. So that means that if you're a teacher and you want to assess, you, you must first do DIT level two certificate. After doing that certificate, that means that now you have fulfilled the minimum requirements for you to assess people in senior three. So you must have that certificate of level two of which many of the teachers have not yet obtained. But in case you have it already, please go on and apply to become an assessor. But the minimum requirement so far at the moment is level two certificate. But to be on an advantage, do your level two, do your level three, do your level four, and so on. Because here we do believe that someone at level two, you already know what is at level one. So you can be able to competently assess that person that you are going to assess. So for those that want to be assessors, level two is the minimum requirement for you to get. So in case you want, please let's obtain level two. But how are we going to obtain them? Now the beauty with the DIT, for them, they can assess you as long as you are competent, as long as you are ready. It doesn't need you to study for 20 years for you to be assessed. For five years, not really. Even if you are competent, uh, even if they're just maths, you go on and get assessed. So in case you want to go for assessment, please apply. What are we going to do? Now, in case your school has a center number for DIT, and you have some teachers who are interested in also doing an occupation. Let me use an example of uh, someone who wants to, let me use soccer as an occupation. In case you have teachers at school or your neighboring area, you as a teacher, you may gather your friends, you say, you know what, let me get Ronald, let me talk to teacher Patrick, let me talk to teacher Elisa, teacher Esther. I talk to teacher uh, Roger. We bring all these five teachers. These ones may be uh, physical education teachers who are good at soccer, who have the skills in soccer, who have the knowledge. You go on and use the manuals, teach yourself, 
make research, and then you ask a DIT to come and assess you. You register and then you sit for the exam. And then once you pass, then you qualify to be able to assess. But at the moment, we don't have soccer. Level two, that is the only challenge at the moment. Yeah? For some of these things that have just been introduced, we may not have soccer. So allow me to use Baker because I know level two is there. So for Baker level two, so you get your five people, read the manual, go through the manual, and then you go on and assess. But for level two manuals, or ATPs can be obtained from the DIT offices. Eh? That's why you can find them. But at times, even it can be very good for you to first do level one. After doing level one, you go on and do level two. And the beauty with these things, you can do them within five months or six months, as long as you give yourself time. You can say, let me start with level one, because level one and level two, they are related. The only difference is that level one and level two, the modules keep on a bit advancing. So better, you first sit for your level one. After getting level one, you say, let me say, for those who can be ready, you can say, we shall sit in May or June. Then when it comes around November, August, we also go on, prepare ourselves, and we sit for level two. So here you have already become an assessor. So what you do, uh, you go and apply. But for people who have already level two certificate, please uh, go download the assessor's form, fill it in, and then take it DIT. So those, because I've told you that DIT does assessment every, every what? Every month. So take your assessment there. You come, uh, application assessor's form is somewhere here. So you go and then uh, get that form, and then you'll be, application to be an assessor is here, uh, fill in your details, and then hand deliver your information or your details to DIT. Once you are successful, then they'll call you for training. They have training for assessors, and then they'll award you a certificate that you have become an assessor, and also you'll sign an agreement an ethical agreement uh, that you have become an assessor with DIT. Okay. Then how is DIT grading? Now, when it comes to grading, theory papers are graded like this. This is their grading scale for theory. We start from A plus to E. However, for someone to, 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 to have uh, to pass theory, you must score 50%. So anyone below 50%, in case you get below 50%, then it means you have failed theory. So for such learners, you will miss out that component on your certificate that you are you know theory on that given occupation. When it comes to uh, when it comes to practical, this is how we grade practical. And when it comes to practical, the pass mark is 65%. If, you, if your student scores below 65, then this person will have failed practical. So for such a candidate, he loses out on the practical. And what, the, what is the beauty? Now, the beauty is that uh, we must work hard to ensure that our candidates or our students pass both the theory and the practical paper. And, and how are they going to be certified? So at the end, uh, when they pass, these students are going to get certificates. So I have covered these certificates to protect people's privacy. So this is how, there are two things that your candidate is going to get. One is going to be a transcript that describes this person as a competent person for that given occupation. So the transcript will look like this. Uh, to have the assessment center, your school, the name of the person, and everything. So this is how the transcript looks like. And then they tell you the overall performance, successful in practical assessment. What did he get? He got a B plus and a description. Then students are also going to get the certificate. They are going to be satisfied with it. both. They will have the transcript and the certificate. So this is how a certificate for DIT will look like and then they'll put the occupation that this person has successfully passed practical 
leading to the word of certificate at level one as a tailor. Now, but for this case, I'm using a student who did not, who passed practical and did not pass theory. So in case you pass one paper, that's the only thing they will put on your transcript, that you only, you passed practical, but they're not sure that you failed theory. No, they only put what you have passed, that pass practical, and also the certificate will emphasize that this student passed practical. What about a student who passes all? In case a student pa passes all, they will put for him that he passed theory and also passed practical. So they put the two things. And also the certificate will demonstrate that this student has passed theory and practical assessment leading to the award of certificate level one as a tailor. So those are the certificates that our children are going to obtain at the end. Ask yourself, why should our children miss this opportunity of getting these certificates? So that's how they're going to be assessed. Okay, I'm almost finishing with the presentation. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is what you call the workers pass. Uh, some of the questions that you sent, uh, one of them was on what you call the workers pass. And okay, when you talk about workers pass, workers pass means workers practically acquired skills. It satisfies the skills and competence of an individual for a particular occupation. Now, when it comes to workers pass, let me give you uh, a scenario. This is a scenario. It says that Mr. Steven has worked for 10 years as a cook at help schools and gained skills and experience in preparing different dishes based on his daily work. Another school announced a well-paying job. However, he lacks a documentation of his skills and abilities. Because of this, he cannot favorably compete where documentation is required. The school administrators can question his abilities and may not trust uh, his competence level. This also affects his negotiation for better pay in the event he's employed by another school. Now, as a school, we are a social gathering. We have people within our community because one of the questions that was asked in the survey, how can we hope, how can we engage our members in the community? We have members in our community that have the skills that are really competent. We have some who are very good at hairdressing, but they lack the documentation that shows that they are really competent. They don't have those papers, the academic papers. They have the inform, they have the skills. How can we convert those skills they have into something formal, something that can demonstrate to them that these people are competent in that field? So now what those people do, they do what you call a worker's pass. So as a school, this is how you can support your community. As a head teacher, as a director, this is how we can engage our community and help out our members within the community to get these certificates. In case you have a community where you have people who are doing hairdressing, but they don't have the papers, but they wish to get them. As a school, you can support those members with these skills. Many of the schools we have people are helping us to prepare meals, but they don't have the papers, but they can get those papers uh, through what you call a workers pass. So workers pass, you, we, this is for people who are in the field, who have been working for years, but want to get some documentation, want to get some academic paper that shows that they are competent such that they can be able to uh, negotiate well in case they get a better opportunity compared to where they are. So those people are subjected to what you call a worker's pass. And for it, it is practical in nature. They don't do theory, but they do practical. In case of uh, this scenario of Mr. Stevie, for it, they, the assessment will be on cooking. They may tell him, prepare this dish, do this and the other. So at the end, he will be able to get uh will be able to get uh, uh to get the certificate uh just give me a minute uh, there is something i have to share 
uh, when it comes to another, there is another question uh, that you asked, and I want to have it uh, captured in this presentation. Okay, okay, maybe I'm going to just talk about it. Uh, I think I did not, I had captured it, but uh, I'm failing to get it. And that question was about, oh, okay, sorry. I just missed it, but I have it here, sorry. Uh, some of you asked, uh, when our children do DIT, can they progress to another level? Now, what you are going to know is that at DIT, we have what we call competence levels, and we have eight competence levels. The first competence level is what we call the modular. When we talk about modular, is for people who are in primary school. And for someone who does a single or uh, two modulars, that one, is equivalent to someone who has done PLE. Then level one is equivalent to someone who has done UCE. So level two is equivalent to A level. Then we have other level three, ordinary level, level four, higher diploma, level five, advanced diploma. Then level six is called bachelor's degree, is equivalent. Level seven is equivalent to master's degree and level eight is equivalent to a doctorate degree or PhD. So now when it comes to these levels, we are going to keep on advancing because you know that our curriculum is taking on to what we call the dual curriculum. So we may have students whose path, whose career path may take on the DIT uh, direction. So for such students, they will go through all these levels such that they are competent such that they are competent in those uh, given occupations, in those given, uh, uh, in those given uh, things that they are doing. But as they advance from one level to the other, each of those levels requires or demands for something else. When it comes to level one, the ones that senior two and senior three, senior three are doing, here the learner must be able to apply the best range of knowledge and skills to perform simple and narrow scope of work within routine and uniform structured contexts, including working with others under direct supervision. So level one, we are looking at students that are still being supervised. So uh, that is level one. But when the learner goes to level two, then we shall expect a modulate supervision. So like that, like that. So those models, uh, all those levels go like that, uh, like that. So when a learner takes on DIT, he can take it on another level, from one level to another, from one level to another, uh, we, uh, such that he's competent in that. And as well, you know, that very soon at the A-level curriculum, we shall have a level two, uh, uh, level two DIT certificate. That means that when someone misses, uh, much as he still has the opportunity to do it, uh, it can be a good chance. Okay. Uh, then lastly, I want us that as we are teaching our learners, let them learn as they are earning. Learn as you earn. Let these children learn in class, but as well, let them earn from what they are learning. But as also a teacher, let's teach as you earn. That as you are teaching in class, you have something else that can bring in uh, some money into your pocket apart from the teaching. And that can be acquired through these skills that you are going to uh, acquire all these skills that we can acquire through DIT. So we shall expect that by the end of, of a senior three, a learner has accumulated at least 80,000 from the occupation he or she is doing. In case I'm doing baking and you reach senior three when you have not gotten money from your business, from your uh, occupation of what the 80,000, then that is a wastage of time. 
So you must be able to let them learn as they earn. From that thing they are doing, in case they are doing baking, in case they are doing tailoring, why should you hire someone else or outside the school when these learners are learning tailoring? Let them learn from their tailoring and then they start making some small business, maybe within or outside school, of doing some tailoring. You may not give them a full contract, but do smaller things. They can repair students' uniforms in case they're doing tailoring. They can make uh, hair. If they can do hairdressing for their fellow students in case maybe they're doing tailoring. They can put up a music concert. Let me say they're into the music. They know how to dance, sing, and so on. So through those activities, we are bringing that entrepreneurial uh, values so they can be able to earn from what they are doing. In case they're making liquid soap, why should the school continue buying liquid soap? Why shouldn't the school support their hustle and they buy some of these things from them? In case they're doing banana farming, why should the school go outside and buy food? Yet these students can grow them from the school and then the school buys from them. So that's what now we need to do. And as you, a teacher who's supervising these activities, you can also be in position uh, to earn from what you are teaching, you are teaching them. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, I think uh, I'm coming to the end of my presentation. And the last thing is uh, some of the common questions that I really gathered from different members. But I'm also, in case your question is not captured here, then kindly, you, we shall give a chance to only five people and then we shall uh, answer them. So the first question that was asked, uh, someone said, can my teachers also enroll if there are some who are interested? The answer is yes. All teachers who are interested in doing DIT, let them enroll, get the certificate, let them get the skills, and then you have competent teachers who can apply the theory knowledge into practical and who will be in position to improve on their state of living. Number two, someone asked what will happen if a learner fails the DIT exams. When a learner fails the DIT exam, this learner, in case he fails both exams, will not be able to get a transcript and will not be in position to get a certificate. So we shall be advising this learner that let the learner repeat. But why should we think of failing? Let us train them now such that they cannot fail. But something that they can do practically, let them do. Another question, I would like to know whether only those in senior three class are the ones to sit for your examination. Will they register for it? The answer here is, is two-sided. One, uh, DIT assesses all learners that are competent. It may not matter the level they are at. Now, in case they want to do level one and they're still in senior two, but when you look at your learners and these learners are competent, those learners can be able to do it. In case you have people in senior five who want to do level one and you feel they're competent, they can do it. So it can be done depending on how competent someone is and what he, he or she wants to do. Uh, can the IT certificate be used to upgrade to diploma? I think I have answered this in one of the slides. The answer is yes. Can a child take a course which is not in line with her vocation subject? This one, the answer is yes. Uh, let the children take on the occupations that they are passionate about. It may not necessarily be in line with their vocation subject. They are doing uh, from the other ends of the knowledge curriculum, but let them do what they feel uh, will be, they can apply. Take an example, a learner may be doing entrepreneurship, but doesn't mean that you should be an entrepreneur or you should, he may do a DIT as an entrepreneur. He may apply his entrepreneurial skills. He may be uh, cooking. He may apply his entrepreneurship in web designing, ICT, web uh, App phone application developer and so on. What qualifies a school to have a DIT center? We have said here, one of the qualifications should be a uh, UNEB center number, but I know there are some schools that have got center, uh, that have got the DIT center numbers without necessarily having the what? 
uh, the UNEB center number. That one can be okay, but as long as you apply and you have the materials to use, then it can be okay. Uh, then can anyone from outside learning center take DIT assessment? Here the answer is yes. And this is how we have said we can engage our community members. You can have a school that, had, let me say, this is where we are going to bring in the collaboration. You may find a school, let me say you find maybe uh, a school in Masaka, whereby they have <clears throat> the materials, uh, but they can do the sharing. That one is very okay. You can use your center number to seat students from other institution. Uh, maybe in case you have few students that don't make up the five, that one can be uh, very okay. How can someone able handle DIT and the normal teaching at the same time? Now here, uh, when you look at the timetable, we may not have that time on the timetable. But as a school, this is where you must create time for DIT because which time? Uh, I think I can, let me see whether I can get for here one of the timetables. You can sit down and divide that time very well and fix DIT on your timetable. At least give it three hours or four hours every week. It can be towards the end of the day. Let me say from four to five. It can be uh, on Saturdays. So some schools, I know some schools who, who, whereby on Saturdays, they do only DIT, nothing like formal learning. They do DIT only from morning to evening. So you can also design it like that, such that you create time for it. Uh, how many occupation uh, does the student select? Here at the moment, we are advising that you select only one occupation but a student may do two occupations depending on his competency levels and capabilities. If a student is really very good, very talented, he or she can register for two occupations, but one, mind about the time for him to handle both the theory and practical theory and practical. So that's why we are saying that much as the student may wish to do two, but the time available may not be enough. So here we advise that let us first do one, when, you, when the student gets time, you can do the second. But if you feel this student is really good and he can handle both, then it is very okay for him to do any number he or she may want. Would the senior three students who have never had DIT lessons be able to perform well if they register for exams? Uh, my answer here is 50, is 50 on 50. Why? <clears throat> When you look at what these students must know, their time they are, they are going to cover these things may not be enough. Uh, the time may not be enough and I, they will not be competent. They can do, they do the passing, but they will not be competent. So here I would not advise someone who has just started to have your learners do. You remember you have already lost a year. So I am, they, <clears throat> you have already lost a year. So they may not be competent in that given field, much as they can try, but I do feel that they will not be uh, competent in that field. They may know something, but not everything because that package is very big. So they may not have a full package. They may be half-baked, which we don't want to produce on the markets. <clears throat> um, uh, but in case you have students who have been practicing, maybe who have been doing baking at home, and you see they are very good at everything, and maybe you just need to do the polishing on the theory, then those ones, I feel they can be able to do it. When shall DIT assess the senior three students? The assessment is going to be in November, uh, but also when your school is ready, they can come and do the assessment. If I have less than five students in one occupation, should they get ready for registration? If the instrumentalists are two in senior three, here my advice would be that uh, uh, let's make it five. You may look for a neighboring school that is also doing instrumentalist and you combine and you make one, uh, one slot. Or you can get other teachers. You can be one, one of them and you make three kids and then you get other two to do it. 
But in case you have money at school, you can just pay for those vacant positions and they sit. That one is also okay. Yes, but I would advise look at for a nearby school that has people are doing instrumentalist, add them up. Also, you as a teacher, you can sit with your students. Apart from 80,000 paid by each learner for region, what other costs involved? I've told you other costs being involved are things concerning the cutting list. So that means you need to budget for them very well, mainly on days when they'll be doing practicals. Because for schools that are doing uh, uh, practicals or that are taking one day IT, I will expect that by now, at least you have gone on to explain to the parents some of those additional costs that they may be required to support the schools on some of these activities. How many occupational activities is a school expected to take? Here, the schools are not limited to how many. It depends on your ability. It depends on your resources you have within school. If you have a lot of resources, you can do all the 120. But if school, in case schools, uh, in case resources don't allow, then select a few that you can be competent in, specialize in a few <clears throat> that you feel you can be able to handle. Otherwise, <clears throat> I want to thank you so much. Uh, let me invite only five to six people who may have some questions, and I take on those questions. Mr. Mr. Kaziba, could you run us through the DIT program that is starting in the different regions? Okay, okay, Mr. <clears throat> okay, now uh, <clears throat> uh, DIT uh, has started on the process of uh, sensitizing uh, schools, teachers, so it's doing more of what is going to start, starting on the 14th of this month. They're going to be in different uh, regions to add some more icing on what you know, such that all regions are competent. So people in Northern region, uh, we shall have trainings in those schools on the 14th, uh, but I think you have seen some communication already going on. Uh, Western region, those schools, uh, will have those trainings on DIT in case you are around one of those schools, then <clears throat> you'll go on and do uh, be more sensitized and also you get more information on matters concerning DIT. In case you are in the Eastern region, those will be the schools where the DIT will be conducted. Then in the Central region, we shall have DIT uh, sensitization and workshops in those schools. So that is where the trainings are going to be this week. I think that's when we shall have the 14th. Uh, so please, we want to request everyone who is around those schools uh, to go and attend to the workshop such that you can be well equipped and uh, versed with DIT uh, matters. Mr. Kaziva, they are specific uh, to say that head teachers or deputy teachers are expected to represent the schools, not one school, one participant. Breakfast and lunch shall be provided. So they are very specific. And uh, it will be on 14th April. So all the trainings happen on 14th April on Friday. Oh. We shall share this on the WhatsApp group so that people can read it. Okay, Mr. Renat. Okay. Can we take on some few questions? Okay. Let me start with Scovia Najemba. Unmute. Thank you. My question is about registration. When when you're registering candidates in a different occupation, how do you do it? And when you're adding candidates in that very occupation you started with, how do you do it? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, when you are registering, let me say, uh, this is my occupation. What you do, Scovia, I'll click on complete. Oh, okay, let me log in again. Okay. 
okay. I'll come to my registration and I say, now these are some of the occupations I have on my dashboard. So you have said you want to know how to add. So I'll come here and I click on the occupation I want. Let me say, I want to add someone in swimming. So this is where I have the swimming practitioner. So what I do, I go at the end where there is view add. I click in this icon view add like that. So when I click on it, it's going to open like this. Then I come here, I say, click to add. Then I add the details, the details, then I add the contents. Uh, I can go back in case I, uh, I want to add other occupations. I go back here and then I keep on adding like that. If, uh, let me up score the idea, okay? For a new occupation that I don't have it, I don't have yet in the system. Yes. For a new occupation that I I don't have in the system yet. Okay, like in case you don't have in the system, come to where you have registration, go to new candidate registration here, then select the occupation you want. In case you want maybe auto electrician, say auto electrician. Put in the level you want, level one, put in everything here, seven. Go to the second one, do the same, add the occupation you want, banana, what, what, like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Martin. Hello. Martin? Yes. yes. Okay, my view is on how we can share. Maybe if at all the, the slides can be shared to all of us. In order okay, Martin, we shall share the slides. We shall share the slides. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, take it now. Take it now. I have two questions. Yes. Uh, one, this one, can a right. student do like a retake in the theory paper after failing? Then two, look into the screen, man. can I like study the modules myself and get assessed by it? Thank you. Okay. The first answer to your question, I've had one question. Yes, they can do a retake in the yeah. paper. Come and moderate you. Okay. Uh, Moses, yourself is Moses. Yes, I have two questions. Hmm. The first question is, uh, in case someone completed P6 hmm. and has been working in the field, like that one register for level one. If yes, uh, when you are registering on the portal, where what do, what do you attach? Where there is a qualification for PLE for those who have completed the PLE? Then it too. How uh, do we register for those ones who want to work as a pass? Okay. Now, if someone has not sat for uh, for P7, uh, that one, he does what you call a modular. That one is going to be doing a modular. So when you are selecting, uh, in case someone has not yet completed P7, when you are selecting the level, put modular. Uh, that's what you put for someone who has not uh, done P7. He does a uh, modular. Then, uh, so that one cannot do level one. As long as you have not yet completed uh, P7, you cannot do level one. The only condition you can do it is when you have modular. When you have the modular, you can proceed and do level one certificate. Uh, Hakim. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my question is, can I jump a level 
like I do level five before, before I've done level one, two, or three. Is that possible? Yes, that one is possible because uh, those levels, it is usually depends, uh, uh, it depends on your qualifications. However, uh, I would advise that if you want to master these skills very well, much as you might be knowing everything within that given occupation, better start from one level to another, one level to another, because these levels are linked. So you might find something at level five, which requires the knowledge you missed in level three. So you find yourself, you are not competent. Uh, we have people who have been in a field, but there are some things they may not know, which you might have, uh, which you were supposed to have in level one, so I would advise Mr. Kim that start with one level, go to the second level, go to the third level, like that. Start from level as much as you can go direct, but that one uh, I wouldn't advise. But I would advise if you are starting, at least start with level two or level one, then you go in through all the channels very well, such that you are competent. Anything within that field, you can do it. Because in case you want to be an assessor, and you have level five, much as we may assume you have everything, uh, but in case you have not never seen things in level three, then it means you may not be in position to assess. So I would advise, let's do all the levels. The good thing, the time doesn't matter. You can do all the levels, level one, level two, level three, within one year, depending on the time you have. Because here, when it comes to DH, time doesn't matter. It depends on how ready you are for that occupation. Yes, taking a mobile limited. Hello. Taking off. I was asking, mm. can I like get the modules myself? I, I as a teacher. I maybe read, learn about everything and get assessed by date. Mm. Mm, like I, I don't invite any trainer, but I do it myself. Can I do that and get assessed? The answer Thank is you. yes. The answer is yes. Yes, but remember to be assessed, don't forget that you must be five within that field. Yeah, but the answer is yes. As long as you can teach yourself everything and become competent, we have no problem. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Rogers? Okay. Rogers, we are missing you. Bosovas Moses? Hello. Yes, please. Mm, my question is, how do you get the work as a pass? You're not passed through the procedure to get the work as a pass. How do we get a worker's pass? Now, uh, when it comes to a worker's pass, that one, you have to go to the DIT offices and then do it. And then register from there. So for it, at the moment, it can be done, uh, what, manually, because we don't have it on the quarter yet. Yes. Yes, Mr. Steven, uh, thank you very much. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, Rogers. Yes, thank you very much for this session. And um, the question of teachers who want to, to also do this assessment is very, very common. And um, in the ICT teacher session, we have many who are interested and we wanted the, and, but the, the, the question I have is level two, you've said that to assess level one, you must have level two. But when I went to DIT, I did see uh, any ATPs for level two, even on the website, they are not there. I don't know if you have seen any um, ATPs or training manuals or guidelines for level two even level three, what are you, is available is level one. Okay, Mr. Rogers, let me just share a photo. I don't know whether my screen is on. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. 
No, like there's a book I'm sharing, a photo. I don't know that you've seen. Yes, I'm seeing. Yes, so that is level two. So level two, the books are there, uh, but they are for buying. You have to buy, though not all books are there yet. Some books have not yet uh, been procured. Some books are still missing, but some of the books for different level, for level two are there. Uh, I know I've got for baking, there is tearing, uh, but I think I need to dig deep and see and find out whether ICT is already there. Yeah, but some especially, of the books, hmm. especially in ICT, because we want to mobilize some members and we do study online, then we register them and we do an assessment next month. Okay, I'm ones. going to find out uh, and then I'll be giving you feedback. But I have got some copies with me here for level two, but in different occupations, not ICT. All right, thank you. Uh, Chivumbi Lennon. Okay, Chivumbi Lennon is not unmuting. No. Yes. Baba Victoria. Yes, thank you so much. Victoria, you are not clear. Victoria, you are not. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Better. Yeah, you're okay. Thank you so much for this program. Uh, recently, our school got the certificate of DIT, but we are yet to organize our students. Uh, and the program running is that they will be assessed in November. Supposing our school is not ready by November, can our students be assessed at any other time ahead of November? Yes, the answer is yes. Like I have said, DIT can assess you anytime as long as you are ready. As long as you are ready, because like every month, when it comes to DIT, every month they assess learners. Okay. So for you, just prepare them. Even if you are ready in December, you will sit in December. Yes. Then my second question is about textbooks. Hmm. Uh, website idea mm. uh, but supposing we want to access the hard copy textbooks how soon can we access the hard copy textbooks? okay i said talking about assessment training packages or no textbooks for learners okay for the various fields okay uh now uh those books uh will be procured or are being procured by m is Light Publishers Limited that is found on Plot 97560, Muffin Publishers Limited, uh, Sir Apple Kagwalod Makelele. So the leading publisher for the BIT prototype is MSA Light Publishers. So those, that is the company. However, they have promised to deliver them very soon. Uh, they finished writing the manuals, but uh, since they are getting the books, uh, the printing was not done here, but very soon they are getting the books here. So let's give them some little time. However, for people who are doing some occupations, we have some of uh, I think we shall go on and share and share some because I think I have I have some manuals uh, for the different things like for those people in dressing, uh, for people who are at schools that are doing planning, at least I have some written manuals that you can start with as we train our learners that contain the theory. So for those ones, we can help out for a few of the occupations that we have. Well, we shall be very grateful, Mr. Stephen. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, the hands are many. Yes, Joshua, move you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kaziba. <clears throat> I have some three concerns. Number one, 
Uh, if someone talked about uh, retaking that course in case Alana has completely not determined the competence better, in that retake, especially for the youth learners, if a learner has shown incompetence in doing that possible to make the pass of the 65%, the 50% theory has failed, is still that money of the youth learner still is going to be operating that retake on that still money of the 80,000 that is paid by the government or the learner will have to pay now a special money? That's one. Number two, is there yet a operate program for a level also to have the IT being paid by the government like the youth learners? Lastly, I saw the deadline was on 28th, that is April of this year. Is still that real correct or the is amendment of the dates for the deadline? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Joshua. One, uh, the deadline still holds, as you saw that message from the PS, Ministry of Education, uh, they clearly stated that the deadline is still 28th. Uh, this is to enable BIT to plan, to know how many candidates are going to sit this year, such that they can be able to print, such that they can be able to get enough assessors and so on. But uh, since the trainings are starting, uh, we are hoping that they may make some little adjustments. But for now, let us first go with the deadline that we have at hand and wait for the communication from the ministry. But at, at the moment, that's the deadline we are still going with. Uh, then for use schools, in case a child fails, uh, that one, I may not have an answer for it, but in my own understanding, I do feel that for that student may be requested or will be requested to pay to do that paper that he or she has failed. Yes, so that one may not be catered for by the government once he fails it, uh, because uh, it will be uh, like uh, something not good. So that one, let us first keep it that the child will pay for it. Uh, Samuel Bakaita, Yes, thank you, Stephen. Uh, my question is, uh, for us, we have opted for the builder occupation. And when you look at the builder occupation, it really takes time from uh, actually so many things. I wonder at what time do you come in to see what we are doing? Or does the assessment rely on the last part only? Uh, then also, I wanted to know whether there are some materials printed out for the theory part, because the theory we have been having has been quite wide for the A-level students. I don't know whether we use the same content. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Samuel. Now, uh, for the content to give to your learners, I will request that you look at the ATP for builders. Then you concentrate on that thing that is within the ATP. Look at the module titles you have in the ATP for builders. Concentrate on only that material. Much as you can go a bit an extra mile, uh, but mainly first concentrate on that within the, uh, the modules and teach the learners or let the learners learn that. Okay. Then um, for theory, uh, so they, like I've told you, MS Elite Publishers is yet to give out uh, the what? Uh, is yet to start the serving of the books. So they promised within this month, I know some books will be coming out. So we shall be able to get some prototypes we can use uh, for theory concerning that matter. Then giving out some materials, I'm not yet sure. Uh, probably we shall need first to find out whether the government will serve out some materials for schools, but I request that uh, in case that occupation, you may let the school sit down, talk with the parents, because I know if at all we involve the parents, remember education is a tri is triangular in nature. If you involve the school, involve the parent and the child, we can decide as a school to, uh, to come up with a 
a model or to come up with a budget whereby we told our parents that parents we want to do construction, but we shall be requesting for such materials. Then the parents, I am sure, they can be able to contribute if you explain and you package yourself, your thing very well, they can be able to support. Take an example, I know one of the schools where I am, whereby for us, what we do, like when children, when a child is going to do tailoring, we tell the parent that, that when the child is coming to school, let him come with a sewing machine. As this child is going back to, to home, he goes back with this sewing machine. So when he's at school, he's practicing. He goes back home, he practices. practices. The same thing I think can happen to the builders, that let them have that kit that a builder needs, such that when they're at school, they practice. Home, they practice. By doing so, we shall have competent learners in that area. But we may, the government may take wrong, of which now that one, which may need first ask further. Yes, Stephen, thank you. But still, mm. uh, the other part of the question was, mm. uh, like building, I've seen you make the trenches, you start mm. on the plinth wall, you mm. build, you go up to bridging, actually mm. up to roofing level where we are supposed to be roofing from. Mm. I'm wondering, that time of now assessing, mm. do you, do you assess what they have already constructed or you come and witness what they are making at that time? They come and witness what you are doing at that time. Okay. Yeah. So they, they will set a question, maybe construct this and this. So they give you, in fact, they give you now for building, you may find that that practice is for six hours. Yes. Yeah. So they will be coming to see what you have. And let me open now, like for building, you don't, you may not need to, uh, for purposes of demonstration, uh, let me hope you are using lime, no wasting of cement. Uh, are you using lime? We actually have been using mud and uh, sand mixed uh, together. Ah, uh, uh, yes, that one can also work very well. That is very okay. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Okay, Colin Sachi. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is, should we register these near ones as maybe they have just entered the near one? Oh. And another question is, does this registration also has a deadline as maybe like you name? Yeah, that's Mr. Coins, the answer, mm. the, yes, there is the deadline that they are giving schools, which is 28th of April. Uh, for schools that are going to sit in November. Then secondly, we are not registering senior ones yet. So we are only registering people in senior three and those whom we feel they are competent. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Emmanuel, Adebasiku, Emmanuel. Yes, thank you. I have I have like uh, three questions, but before that, I made one inquiry about uh, if you are looking into DIT e registration for the first time. I wasn't very clear about that, maybe because of my network. And, uh, and then for those who are doing ICT, are uh, there the, the the packages for the ICT for level one? Like, can they also design some calendars? Oh, it's on the website. They can they can build up with. And then now, uh, like I'm in West Nine. So now for the physical training that you're saying in central regions and those ones, are those also training coming to take place in the in West in West Nile or or we all go that side, which is near for us? Thank you. Okay, now the last question. West Nile, they will be in this course, Greater Wishenyi, Greater Ambalala, Kigezi, Nyakasula, Kasese, Chala. So Western has also been captured, uh, Mr. Stephen. Uh, okay, yes. Western has Mr. been captured. Mr. Kazuba is talking about West Nile. No, Nile. West Nile, Nile, not Western. The one of our human Nile has in Vara SS. Oh, oh. West Nile, yes, it is here. My Vara SS. Yeah, I've seen it. Thank you. Okay, then. Uh, doing the online registration, I've said one option you can use, come to DIT website, 
come here in the right hand corner, press register online. Then when you press register online on this portal, here come put username is your center number, UVQF maybe slash 1234. Then after placing that, that one is your username and is the password. Okay. So you put okay, thank you. password, then you log in. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then the last question. I told that when it comes to ICT, we don't have only those website, uh, uh, website. We have others that I can do. ICT. We have these are the main ones that we have now. Computer application user, system administrator, ICT practitioner. These are these are the ones we have. Okay, uh, we are going to take on more three questions and then we shall end at that. Uh, people who may have questions, then okay. Yes, Eddie Teacher Budo Christian SS. I've not picked the question. I don't know. Mr. Ronald, have you picked the question? Unless he types, it's not. Okay. Edit teacher, we request that you type. Uh, we are taking more two more questions. Uh, John Bosco, Wafla. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate your presentation. I've really understood what DIT is all about. Now, I have uh, a short question, which is really related to the other gentleman of uh, building, which I need the clarification on. Uh, because uh, take a case of a poultry, where a learner is going to, to do the poultry, maybe raise chicks up to the stage of rearing eggs, of, of laying eggs. Now I'm wondering, when it comes to assessing, I thought they were to assess, they were to assess the whole process, to maybe to ask a learner stages he went through, the health precautions, such things. They are they also going to tell him now to rear the birds at the end, or oh, really it is not clear to me how the practical will look like. Practical part is the one which I'm so much interested in. Thank you very much. I really thank you for this program. It is really clearing the air and we can guide the rest of the staff very well. Thank you. Oh. Okay, thank you so much. Now, some of the now uh, some of the things they can ask, like in the in the theory paper, they ask everything they have governed, they have covered in that course. But take an example when it comes to performance test item or practical, they may tell the student construct a four by two by 2.5 meter blooder and prepare it to receive young birds within an established poultry unit. So that one can be a plucked one. Uh, they can tell them mix, pack and store one kilo, 100 kilograms of a starter feed for, for maybe layer buds, maybe for uh, breeder buds, maybe for layer buds. So that's how they will assess in that area. Hope Mr. John, your question has been answered. So that's how they'll ask. One more, uh, let me, okay. Yes, I've picked someone, the last person, Proceed. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Stephen. Uh, mine is just I need a clarification concerning the teachers who will teach the DIT modules in school. These current teachers who are teaching other subjects are the ones to teach DIT or the school has to employ uh, a specialist in DIT. Then another thing, uh, during assessment, will you send him to the letters and invigilators like your neighbor does or that to ensure that there is no question I have is concerning the um, like tailoring. I saw on the screen where you displayed the chart, meaning that those learners in tailoring will learn all sorts of styles and fashions because they will not be knowing what DIT will ask. I would like to be clarified on that. Okay, thank you, Prost. Uh, yes, Prost, the last question, the answer is yes. They must know all the different uh, occupations as, uh, as outlined in the ATP. So you look at the ATP and then look at the different fashions, but let them know everything. In case there's a shirt, in case there's a dress. Uh, in fact, uh, I think I will have shown you even uh, in November, they told them to make a skirt. In December, that group was told to make a shirt. So they must be knowing everything. Bit address, bit a shirt, and other things concerning tearing. Then two, uh, DIT will be, a send, will be sending assessors to your school, like uh, those ZUNEB scouts and so on. Even they send scouts to your schools. So to mm. such that no malpractice takes place. Then mm. the other question was about uh, the teachers to teach DIT programs. Oh, uh, now the teachers to teach DIT program, uh, we are going to use the teachers we have at school. Those teachers uh, can teach the DIT manuals. In case you have someone who has been teaching uh, clothing and textile, that teacher can teach tailoring. If at all you have been having a teacher who teaches food and nutrition, that teacher can handle baking. A teacher who teaches agriculture can carry on the agriculture. A teacher who teaches PE can take on the sports. A teacher who teaches performing arts can take on those things within the music area. So mm. uh, let's first utilize the teachers we have. But in case mm. you feel that uh, you need more support, then that is when you can bring in. But for more support or for benchmarking, uh, we have technical institutes those vocation institutes that have been doing. So you can do some benchmarking and hire like someone there to come and just uh, uh, fine tune what your teacher has done, but encourage your teachers to study the ATPs, encourage them to make more research and encourage them to do uh, all. Even the teacher of entrepreneurship, you are the one to take on the entrepreneurial uh, occupation. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. I think, uh, Mr. Stephen, a okay, minute. Okay. Yeah, my worry is eh? actually, hello? Mm. hello? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm looking at, I'm, I would also like to clearly know is it mandatory that each school has to take up DIT? If it is, yes. I'm seeing a lot of issues because there are some schools you find they don't teach agriculture, they don't teach food and nutrition, there is nothing like that, there is no ICT, they don't have computers. How is the government going to address such challenges? Okay, thank you, Pros. Uh, my answer to that is that DIT is not compulsory, but it is desirable. Why? Uh, if I you look at my presentation, uh, I, all, I wanted to show, I was showing you of the importance of us having these children do the DIT. So we are saying DIT is not composite, but it is our wish that let these learners benefit a lot from it when they still have the chance. For me as a parent, you as a parent, you as a teacher, 
Your joy is seeing your student, is seeing your learner getting employed, having something you can do to earn a living. It's really very painful to teach a child for seven years and he goes on a street and looks for a job. Yet we have a chance to change the, the, the direction that this learner can have something he can start with. So we are saying, if we have the chance, if we have the resources, let's expose our learners to practical learning. Let's give them the time. Let's give them the opportunity to get the skills. In the future, a student, a learner who has two certificates cannot compete with someone who has only one certificate. Imagine a learner goes out of a uh, senior with a certificate in DIT, with a, a past VP in UNEB, that learner will be far much better. Even you, when you are employing this person, you will say, this one is more skilled. At, in the future, people are not mainly looking at the academic qualifications, but they are looking at that extra thing you can do, that extra skill that you can do. You have seen that teachers who have more skills apart from this offering the service of teaching, have gone on to be more successful than people who are only concentrating on the teaching. So we want them to be equipped because even the theme for the new curriculum says, let us produce graduates with unemployable skills. So we are requesting, we are encouraging schools that let us do all what it takes to see that at least our learners graduate from our schools when we have skills. Once we do that, schools expenses are going to reduce. You will not be buying posho, you will not be buying beans, at least your budget will reduce and you divert that money to do something uh, else for constructive work. Let us nurture their talents. Sports is a, is a good field. Let us start at an early age, but using the resources we have. Yeah, thank you, Stephen, but I still also, some inquiry there to the schools without resources and those learners should have been given the first prior priority. Those schools with resources will still take up the high class, the first class. Then those schools without resources, learners who would have got the same things will also still miss out. I think it is a, a, a matter of thinking about it. Maybe we cost share and help those learners, especially in remote villages who would have uh, benefited from DIT, but they don't have resources. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Bruce. You have a point of uh, which I feel we shall have to discuss at length. Uh, we shall have to discuss it at length. That is right. Uh, for some schools that are in remote areas, uh, they may miss out on some opportunities. But I request, if you have the resources, please, let's expose our learners. Let's not deny our learners, our children, the chance to have that skill acquired. And then the last question someone was asking, uh, whether a student who has already done UCE can register for DIT, the answer is yes, he can do a uh, register and he does that exams. Uh, for all those people who still have questions on DIT, kindly uh, use the WhatsApp. We shall be able to answer uh, on that WhatsApp. Mr. Mr. Kaziba, Mr. Kaziba, yes. Kaziba, if I may request for, I can see Paul, Paul from Kabong SS, um, somebody calling in from Kabong in Karamoja. That would be very helpful to hear his question as we close. You could okay. allow Paul. Paul, 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 Carbon. Okay. Yes, Paul. Yeah. Hello. Yes, Mr. Carbon. Uh, sorry, Mr. Good Bank. morning, Yes, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure being on this platform this time. I want to appreciate what we've been taking out through, we have clarified about the IT. Uh, mine just uh, something I wanted to know as um, those input the assessors, because uh, mm. you said 
if ones we just talk, our learners, they must be at least five. Now I'm looking at the scenarios where I want to go like uh, maybe two or three levels at the same time. How do I do and how do I attract the assessors to me? Who wants to have the, maybe like two, three levels done maybe like in one year? Thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Paul. Now for such a case, uh, like for each level, there'll be a sending, sending you an assessor. So in case you want to do, it depends on the math you want to do there, but it doesn't matter. For them, they'll, they'll just send you. In case you, uh, okay, I think your question was, in case those learners want to do, the, maybe they want to do level one, level two, level three in the same year. Now, the certificates for level one, they take around three months to come out. So what you do, in case you want them to do all those certificates in one year, let me say, let them do the first assessment in January. Then teach them, teach them, teach them, maybe up to around January, February, March, April, register them for the second level, maybe level two certificate, then like that. So you wait for up to when the certificate comes out, then you can register them for another uh, certificate, but they can do them within one year, depending on how you have timed yourself. So the timing is what is important, that the certificate, the transfer to come out, it comes out after uh, around three months. That's when it comes out. Mr. Kawonga, have I answered your question? It looked like it is him, the teacher, who wants to get the assessments, if I'm not, well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, teacher. Yeah, for you. you got me very right. Eh? What I wanted to know basically, if a teacher wants to do these assessments, maybe preparing himself to become one of the assessors in the future, mm. how should it be done? That's what I want to know. Oh, how is it done? Okay, now in yeah. case this teacher who wants, eh? yeah. uh, like mm. I've said, you need five of them. So you get your friends, like five, you look at the ATP, eh? you get the assessment training packages, you go through okay. all the modules, and then you register yourself then you wait then as you are waiting for your results to come out then you start on the second level you read you read you read you make practice then up after around after three months four months then you register for the second one so in case you start in april now to read then you can register yourself around june for the first certificate then you wait for your certificate in about two uh, okay, three months, that means three or two, but even it can come out early. It can even take a month or two, depending on what they have on their table. Then after that, you register again for uh, level two. But that is for someone who is already in the field, who knows what to do, such that you can be able to do it very well. But in case you are not someone who has been in the field for a long time, then you may need more time for you to be competently able to do everything within that assessment training package. OK, that means every time I just how to pay the 80,000 now. Now, the amount you pay depends on the level. Someone at level one pays an, uh, a different amount with someone at level two. So the more you, the higher you go, the more the amount increases. At level one, you pay 80, level two, you pay 100. So it may keep on increasing like that, depending on the level. Okay, thank you very much. You've answered my question. Okay. Okay, Mr. Ronald, I think uh, let us request the rest to have their questions on the WhatsApp. I don't know what you are saying. I think that is the best we can have, but also to encourage, especially the head teachers, to look out for the DIT trainings that are going to happen on 14. Um, April, so that they can attend all their deputies, so that they can attend that training and have all these questions um, answered. Uh, maybe what I have noted is uh, the members here need to realize that this program started with the introduction of the new lower secondary curriculum, and that means that it is guided 
when you are rolling out a national program, you guide it, you guide the program with what you want to do uh, within a specific period. So it was guided uh, that the learners who started the lower secondary curriculum, by the time they get to senior three, they should be certified at level one. And that is why probably you are seeing that the ATPs that are available online are supporting level one, because this is a program, it's a national program that started and will grow in strength. So do not wish to, to, to stretch um, the national program. And if you want to stretch the national program, then you have to travel yourself um, to the DIT um, home and get the other assessments done for the other levels. Secondly, um, I think schools also need to be careful as they choose the areas of certification. There are some common things that can happen, like sports. You have um, district sports, you engage in so many activities, then why don't you certify learners in areas that are cheap for you as a school than trying to set up uh, a workshop, a workshop for tailoring, or you want to set up now um, a building a department and you don't have the funds to do that. So my thinking is that, yes, the learner in your school may not be able to get the building skills now, but there are some skills um, that they can, they can get. And looking at the agricultural sector, which is common to many, I think that that would be uh, a beautiful step to take but also community members, the parents in the community. Some of them are experts in some of those areas that you're talking about. So make use of your parents who, who train your learners as experts. But if we try to go the hard way and we all want our learners to be certified in computer um, programs, then we don't have the computer room. I think that will also be um, on the higher side for us. Let's not down look, uh, undermine some of the um, areas that have been put forward. Other than that, I want to thank Stephen for leading us through this, but also encourage the members to please attend the DIT sessions that are running in your districts. And very soon, maybe we shall have centers of support where uh, DIT doesn't have to come down, but experts are trained and the experts can cascade the training to you. I want to thank you, Stephen, and please let us continue the discussion on WhatsApp. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ronald, for the remarks. I want also to thank all the teachers that have joined the call. Thank you so much. And for those that came in late because the room was full, uh, we are really very sorry. And uh, next time we shall have uh, a bigger room. Uh, we do promise that we shall continue having such engagements such that we can be in position to cross the learning gap and also to hope each other. We can learn from each other when you know something we can be able to, you can be able to share with us, we share with each other, and at the end, we shall be able to produce good citizens and we shall be able to implement the new curriculum very well. Keep all your questions on the WhatsApp group. Uh, we shall be able to, uh, to answer all those questions. And then we shall see uh, when the time comes, when we shall have uh, the, another meeting. We are going to still continue engaging you. We shall have other meetings, uh, like we shall have meetings uh, on the project. I saw some of you posted some questions on the project. We shall also have meetings on the competence-based curriculum on how to come up with projects and other areas uh, whenever the time allows. We want to thank you so much.
Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, may I request one volunteer uh, who can lead us in a closing prayer and then uh, we call off the meeting. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining. Uh, those who still have their hands up, uh, please put them down. And we have just one volunteer to lead us in a closing prayer. May I request, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, Joseph, lead us in a closing prayer. Nakoko Joseph, lead us in a closing prayer. Bera Oyela, you can lead us. Someone wants to lead us. Betty or Joseph, one of you can lead us. Hello? Yes, I lead us in a closing prayer, Betty. Uh, can I be heard? Yes, you are clear. Hello? Okay, please. Yes. Let's pray. Almighty, ever loving Father, we'd like to thank you for this moment. We thank you for bringing us together. We pray that you bless us all so that we get the strength and the skills of serving the nation and the young one towards the employment skills which are required in the world. As we depart, Father, you give us the help. I pray all this in the name of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. We can unmute everyone and say bye bye to everyone until we meet again. Yes, Maurice. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for the meeting. Someone who hope us unmute and say bye. Bye. Oh, bye. 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 Bye.